Welcome students, Lynette here. How are you today? I would like to have a little chat with you as we finish up chapter three in the textbook on the balance sheet by uh, making a real world example for you. I would like to explore the balance sheet for a company and for no particular reason I picked IBM and my point with all of this is to show you first of all how easy it is to find financial information for a company. You just need to log on the computer, visit IBM.com's website, look around for information on investors, in our case it's on the bottom of the page, click on it, open the annual report, then we're going to look at some things that were mentioned in the chapter the management's discussion and analysis, management's responsibilities, and the audit report. Then I would like you to save IBM's entire annual report to your computer for future reference. I enjoyed it so much I'd like to reference it throughout the rest of the year. And then print just the annual report financial pieces, which are included on page 78 to 84. The whole report's very long, and you only need just a few pages. So. I've told you what to do, now I'm going to show you how to do it. Are you ready? Let's go to a browser and I'm going to pick a blank page and just type in IBM.com and up pops their website. Now you can find investment information financial statement information for investors on websites in different places. Sometimes it's in the top navigation bar or a navigation bar on one of the sites. For IBM it's on the bottom and you can find it under information for and investors. So we'll click on that and a page opens that takes you to investor relations for IBM and I'm going to further click on their annual report and just like that I have the most current annual report for IBM in my possession. This is where you could save it but I want to explore it with you and just point out that it's amazing how fast you can have information now in this information age. When I went to school it would have taken several weeks to acquire this but you can get it in I don't know roughly two minutes wouldn't you say? I'm going to slowly scan the annual report so you can get a feel for what it looks like. It starts with a letter to the investors from the CEO of IBM. Ah, oh, there we go, Virginia Romady. And all annual reports start with this, and usually it's quite long. And then it will almost always fade into some advertising for the company. And IBM has a lot of information they want to share with you about how their year went, what their plans are, what their visions are. Right after the marketing comes a page called Financial Highlights on All Annual Reports. And we'll visit this in the future and it gives you some information that investors usually want right at your fingertips. Following that will be the table of contents and you can see what's included in their annual report. We talked about management's discussion and analysis in chapter 3. You can see IBM's is quite long, roughly 50 pages. This information is useful and it helps you understand where IBM's going. It is biased because they're putting a good spin on their company, of course. Next is the report of management that was talked about in Chapter 3, and the report of the independent accounting firm. Let's buzz to the report of management. What I want to point out for you is IBM, in writing in their annual report, takes responsibility for the financial statements. The company is responsible for the accuracy of their financial statements, and that's what they tell you in the report of management. There's also a management's report on internal control. This comes from um, Sarbanes-Oxley Law and the fiascos of the last decade and now management is required to show that they have adequate internal controls over the financial reporting of the company. Whoever signs this report, in our case Virginia, the CEO, and Martin, the CFO, is attesting to the 
adequacy of internal controls to generate accurate financial statements. If it is found that the financial statements are grossly negligent, both Virginia and Martin face up to 20 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. So, their teeth in Sarbanes Oxley's not fooling around anymore. And moving on now to the audit report. That will always come next in an annual report. And our auditors were Price, Waterhouse, and Coopers, one of the biggest accounting firms in the world. And as you know from reading Chapter 3, there are different opinions that you can express on financial statements. And IBM got a clean, a clean opinion, an unqualified opinion, where it says the financial statements present fairly in all material respects the information that's contained within. If you're going to use an annual report, it's always important to know what the auditors have to say about the information before you rely on it. Next comes Consolidated Statement of Earnings or the Income Statement. That's not the star of our chapter. A consolidated Statement of Comprehensive Income, that newcomer that I'm sure is a little I don't know, unknown to you. We'll talk about that in Chapter 4. And now the star of our show, the Consolidated Statement of Financial Position. This also means balance sheet. Notice the Consolidated is used in the title, and all that means is that IBM has um, ownership in other entities that require that they consolidate their financial statement because it's over 50%. Our balance sheet must show two years of information all annual reports are required to do that. They throw, show three years for the period of time statements and two years for our point in time statement or the balance sheet. One thing I really like about the way IBM does their financial statements is that they show a reference to the notes. You know the notes are an integral part of the financial statements from your reading, and IBM makes it easy for you to research any topic because it actually lists the note reference on the financial statements. That's not required, but it's a nice feature. IBM also meets another reporting requirement, and that is one that says you must show information about your stock on the face of your financial statements, meaning literally on them themselves. And you can see IBM has met that. Common stock shows the par value. It shows the shares that have been authorized and the shares that have been issued. And you could get to the shares that are outstanding because they show Treasury stock information. IBM has also met reporting requirements because they've made this statement the following notes are an integral part of these financial statements. So there's IBM's balance sheet, and they have a statement of cash flows, a statement of changes in owner's equity, and a consolidated statement of changes in equity. We'll talk about those more later. And then the last thing that was injured, or um, discussed in your chapter is significant accounting policies. All financial reports must include a note that discusses the significant accounting policies so that you can tell what choices IBM has made when choices are available. Did they use FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, that kind of thing. That will always be the first note to the financial statements or a preemblem to the notes. Well, that concludes our visit to IBM. What I would like you to do now is to print those financial statements and let's go to back to our presentation. What I would like you to do then is to print those pages of the annual report 78 to 84 and use it to calculate the information that I've listed below. Let's go down here to not too smooth at that. Exploring the balance sheet, calculating financial ratios for IBM. These ratios were discussed in the chapter. The current ratio, the asset test ratio, working capital, debt to equity. I added one that's not in the chapter, debt to assets, and I gave you the formula right here. Take total debt, 
divided by total assets, and then calculate the times interest earned ratio. So just for practice, let's look at the ratios that you were asked to complete in the chapter. Come back when you're done, and we'll continue from here. Welcome back. I calculated the ratios as well and placed them in the various boxes. How did you do? Your numbers look pretty close to mine. Whether they do or not, um, let's talk about them. First, the current ratio. We'll look at liquidity first by looking at the current ratio, the asset test ratio, and the amount of working capital for IBM. Notice in 2012, IBM was at 1.13, which means for every dollar they had in current liabilities, they had $1.13 in current assets to pay them off with. And there's an improvement. In 2013, for every dollar they have in current liabilities, they have $1.28. The ratio is still a little weak, just in my opinion, but it shows improvement from 12 to 13. The quick ratio is a more stringent test as it's just quick assets divided by current liabilities. And again, you can see improvement from 2012 to 2013. The calculation of working capital shows a further improvement in liquidity. I know that IBM brings their numbers out in millions rounded. We'll just say it as it appears for ease. They say they have $5,808 of working capital in 2012, and it's nearly doubled to 2013. Add six zeros, and you can see they have a fair amount of working capital, but they're a big company. So I think you could say that the two-year trend for the liquidity ratios is that IBM is slightly more liquid than the prior year. Now let's look at the risk or the leverage ratios. You look at debt to equity and it's pretty telling. IBM doesn't have a lot of common stock outstanding. They depend mostly on debt to finance operations. For every dollar they had in equity, they had $4.50 in debt. And that increased. So risk increased between 2012 and 2013. IBM uses a lot of leverage, as is discussed on the last pages of your chapter. Here's the ratio that I added. If you look at debt as a percent of assets, 84% of the assets are financed with debt for IBM. It improved a little to eight when you moved to 82, but you can see when you compare it to equity, um, they were more leveraged from that indicator. 82% is still rather high. I myself like to see that more around 70%. But it looks like IBM's quite able to service the debt. This shows you how many times they could pay interest from their earnings. 48 times if you look at 2012 and 49 times 2013. So although they appear to be highly leveraged, it looks like they have adequate funds available to service that debt. So the two-year trend shows improved liquidity, but more leverage and probably slightly higher risk. Well, ratios taken by themselves show information at a point in time. Ratios taken for two years let you see a trend on what's going on. That's interesting. But wouldn't it be more interesting to learn how to get comparative data for IBM? And that's what I want to show you next. What you need to do is um, print these instructions, and I'll now show you how to get comparative information from the college's Hoover's Financial Service Database. You go to Salt Lake Community College's website, click on the index, visit the library, select articles databases, click on Hoover's, and then select what you want to see. So rather than talk about it, let's do it. The first thing I want to do is to go to the college's website. And we probably ought to go all the way back to the beginning so you can see where we start. Hello. 
Ah, uh, well, I don't know what that is. Whoops, let's put in another C there. Oh, dear. Not a very good typer, am I? There you go, got it. Go to the A to Z index. Click, click on L for library. Go into the library and you can search their database. They might ask you for your um, username, which is the same as for your My Page account, and then a PIN, which is the last four digits of the phone number you have on record with the college. Now we're going to go into Articles and Database. Use the drop down menu and look for Hoover's. Select that database and open it. Now, just that easy. Oh, looks like I need to log in again. There we go with my information. I'm going to press continue. And we're in Hoover's. IBM is what I want to look at, and Hoover's brings it right up. A world of information is now at your fingertips, and you should explore this site, but to keep this short, I just want to go into competition and look at the competitive landscape for Hoover's, for IBM, and I'm going to drop down. I don't know why those graphs didn't populate. They usually do. And then there's some key numbers. They look at profitability. We'll look at that in the next chapter. Evaluation, all coming later. Efficiency. Ah, here's the financial information for IBM, for Hewlett Packard, for Microsoft, for Accenture. The industry that IBM works in is medians and the market as a whole. I interested for no particular reason in comparing IBM to Microsoft. So I'm going to grab this information and bring it back to our analysis. And there's one more that the author did, which in this chapter, just a little bit, return on equity. So I'm going to grab that information and bring it back to our report as well. So that's how you get into Hoover's. And I'll send you those instructions. Let's close these out and go into our instructions. So now you can see how you do it. Now I've brought those numbers forward and added them to my little look for financial ratios for IBM. And I've highlighted the one I added. And you can see Microsoft is more liquid than IBM on their current ratio, on their quick ratio. They have far more working capital. And as far as debt to equity goes, Microsoft only has 92 cents in debt for every dollar they have in equity, so they are not nearly as leveraged as IBM. One could say they have much less risk. When you look at their debt to assets, only 48% of their assets are financed with debt, another indicator of lower risk. But just like it said in our chapter, look what happens on the return on equity. When you have more shareholders to share, the income among, it dilutes it only 26% of a return on common stockholders' equity for our investors, whereas IBM, who has really very few investors, is showing a whopping 95% return. And when you look at times interest earned, you can see that all of them are about able to service their debt in the same. So Microsoft is a little debt adverse, and it shows in their return on equity. IBM is aggressive in their use of debt. It also shows in their return on equity. And wasn't it interesting to find out just how easy it is for you to find financial information on a company and their competitors? I'll print the pages I use for this presentation so you can have all your instructions, and I hope you found it interesting. Good luck on your test on Chapter 3, and I'll be talking to you again before long. Goodbye for now.